Hello. Hello, hello. Let's see, are we live? Okay, so I'm going to be monitoring. Uh, hold on, let me turn the volume down. Okay, so I'm going to be monitoring the stream, the chat, everything like that. So uh, if there's something going on, I know every single time there's been some technical difficulties. So if we're having any of those, let me know. I'll do my best to resolve it. I'm hoping that this time I finally have it down. I have uh, the audio, hopefully, is stereo or at least mono, uh, but not out of one ear. Okay. Cool. Okay. So first and foremost, I wanted to get started by promoting the new podcast here, uh, which is Syntax.fm, where Wes Boss and I discuss all kinds of web topics. The first episode is on React tools, and we have two more episodes coming, one uh, this Wednesday and one next Wednesday. And then uh, those two topics are going to be WebRTC uh, pers we're going to be doing like talking a lot about uh, video and sort of what projects you can do that are maybe not centered around just building a you know a webcam thing. We're going to be talking about some really interesting projects that both Wes and I have uh, done using WebRTC and just web video in general. Okay, uh, what else we have? Uh, the third episode is going to be on. Uh, basically, CSS preprocessors, what Wes and I both like, you know, how we organize, what features we like to use. So head over to Syntax.fm, subscribe. Really, really uh, fun podcast. Okay, so that said, let's get to the point of this stream. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving my site, which is scotttolinsky.com, over to Gatsby. Now, there is uh, some issues here that I haven't quite addressed yet, and I'm not going to be able to address them on this video. So uh, by the end of this video, what we're not going to have is we're not going to have this thing done, but the components are going to be there. The React stuff's going to be in. Reason being, uh, my whole site is in Stylus. There's a lot of CSS. Well, there's not that much CSS, but either way, there's you know about 400 lines of Stylus code that... I would prefer not to totally rewrite, but um, Stylus itself uh, is not currently working in Gatsby. Um, apparently, there's a pull request in. It's just not in the latest version yet. So we cannot use the Stylus Webpack Loader that I've been wanting to use. So I'm considering just moving this all to styled components or just inline styles with React so I can get that nice server-side rendering stuff. But... Um, so the styles aren't going to be there. That's that's pretty much it. I, I might get some styles in here. I just want to get these components over and get this sort of up and running. Um, and for the comment about 720p is the best quality, yeah, uh, my computer, my network are just they're just not strong enough to handle anything more right now. Uh, I'm gonna work on that. Um, get a new computer. And hopefully everything will be better. But right now, as it is, this thing's like ready to blow at 720p. And if I do anything more than that, the stream is just laggy. We found out that at last time. Um, so that's why it's 720. Okay, so here's the website. Um, this is what we're going to be replicating. And uh, not OBS. Let's head to VS Code. There's really nothing fancy about this website. Uh, we are using React Router 4. There's four pages, the home page, the about page, the projects page, and the contact page. And uh, like I said, really nothing fancy. The, there's a lot of stuff that could be refactored, right? Like there's some uh, wet code here. I'm repeating myself a whole bunch. You could turn that into an array of objects, right? So um, yeah, so while we do this, we're going to improve upon it. We're going to take this up and we're going to... Uh, we're going to... Uh, Put this into Gatsby, and this site's going to be way faster. Um, I did make my web page. Yeah, just by myself. It's pretty much how I work on most things. So, let's see. Um, I should note that the current site is in Meteor, and you might be wondering why the heck I would do a site in Meteor that's just four static pages. The answer is because there was a bunch of admin backend tools that I was using for myself uh, to keep track of a bunch of stuff. Uh, I, I just totally 
deleted all of those features semi recently because I just wasn't using them. They were stagnating because of that. Uh, there's really no reason for this site, not only to be on Meteor, but to have a database or anything, right? So one of the reasons why I'm redoing it. I probably won't change the style a little too much though, because I think I just refreshed it. Um, okay, so enough of me dancing there in the background. Let's go ahead and I've installed Gatsby already. Um, and it might be worthwhile to have that open. Well, okay, I've had Gatsby installed already, just the NPI install Gatsby. And we can now say uh, Gatsby not develop new. And I'm just going to name this. What did I name this before? I think it was ST 2015. So we'll do ST 2017. And let's see how long this takes. I would make breakdancing tutorials, but um, there's a ton of good ones. Well, I don't know if there's a ton of good ones. Um, <laughs> but I just, uh, I'd have to get a lapel mic and all that stuff. I've taught lessons a lot to uh, children, to adults, whatever, but never online. Okay, so this is just basically going to get us up and running, install a bunch of stuff, bring our dependencies in. Let's see. When this is all done, it'll be available in my folder here. Uh, Gatsby is a static site generator. It's built using GraphQL and React and Webpack. Uh, I would prefer if you don't DDoS my website, um, just because that's mean. Like, I don't need to be mean to people. Um, okay, it's just still installing. It's going to take a little bit to install. My CPU is going crazy because of this live streaming. Uh, this will be saved on the channel. You can watch it anytime. Uh, Uh, so question, uh, Gatsby JS site could be an AMP website. You know, I, I'm, I'm not like, I don't, I don't know necessarily where I stand on the AMP website thing. Um, if you don't know about AMP, it's basically an accelerated mobile page for Google and it adds a little bit of overhead. It's sort of, it's a Google only thing. I just don't know how I feel about it just yet. Uh, the, the sites are super fast. But once we get this up and going with Gatsby, other than the video itself loaded up here, this site's going to load really super fast. Um, like I said, this is taking forever to install because my CPU is going nuts doing this live stream. It might help if I close out stolinski.com or at least get away from this video. Um, but yeah, the reason why Gatsby is great, uh, basically, allows you to use your React Webpack tools uh, to build really super fast static sites. Uh, in addition, it also allows you to connect to all sorts of things using plugins. You could connect to a WordPress backend and all sorts of stuff like that and bring in your data using GraphQL. So there's a lot of really nice positive things for uh, the future of, of Gatsby in terms of using it for more than just maybe like a website like this. But, I mean, you can bring in data from Markdown files in a blog really easily. You can bring in, like I said, Drupal or WordPress and use it as a front end for that. Okay, so it looks like this is all in. I'm going to change directories into ST2017. And now I'm going to run Get speed develop, which will get this up and going. I'm also going to drop ST2017 into VS Code here. Uh, 
Uh, I'm considering a series on Gatsby. I'm just, this is my second time using it. The first time was during the level up first look, and that was literally the, my, my first look at it. Um, this time, we're going to dive into a little bit more, although we're not, I'm not doing anything complex. So, Okay, so check it out. Uh, we have this installed. I have my source folder, which is basically we're going to be spending most of our time, where we have a layout, which is basically just our index layout. And I have, uh, we have pages in here, index page two. We're going to obviously give it a page two, uh, or at least change the name of it. Utils, there's a typograph, uh, typography uh, utility here that allows us to set font sizes. I haven't decided if I want to use this yet. I will maybe do that, but maybe just not on camera because I need to take a look at it. Uh, yes, I do use VS Code uh, over Atom because it's much faster. That is literally why I use it. Atom, when I was getting into larger projects, was just totally slogging down. And as much as I liked Atom, it can't handle large projects, or at least can't right now. Okay, so check it out. First things first, I want to start to move in some things like my header and stuff like that. Also, the site is up and running at port localhost 8000. I'm going to Okay, cool. So I have this Gatsby header. Let's get into some code here. And you can see I'm working with my main template. I have my page title, which is set by React, uh, or said here by the Gatsby default starter. I can just say Scott Talinsky. Okay. I might actually change that to be my actual header, whatever it is. I'm not going to worry about the meta right now. I'll change it. Now we have some things here. We have this header, which is some divs. We have this div with a background of Rebecca Purple. We have another div that contains the header link. Yeah, I'm just gonna start nuking some of this stuff out of here. So first and foremost, let's, let's get rid of this header stuff because I don't need it. I'm going to maybe come back and, and look at some of these styles. Like I said, these this some of the site is probably due for another look or a rewrite. Uh, this theme for VS Code is Material Design. I think it's Material Dark something color theme. I should do this at the beginning of each. Material Theme Pale Night. It's under the Material Theme group. There's a whole bunch of them. I'm using the uh, Insiders build of VS Code, so it's the the beta, beta version. Okay, so we have a header. Let's just copy this thing over. The styles are going to be an absolute mess. That's okay. And what's cool about this Gatsby is that they are using React Router, even though you're using it from Gatsby Link. Or at least I'm, I'm pretty sure they're using React Router from what I saw when I was looking at it in React DevTools. But if you're already using the link tag, you don't have to update your link tags to something else. We just have link. So that's nice. I don't have to update this. You can save this. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay, so nothing crazy, obviously. This is going to be a lot of copying and paste right now. Now, what we don't need to add is I don't need to add this switch, right? Because before we had our React router, and the React router was taking care of the routing in Gatsby, we're not going to actually be doing any sort of switch or route tags. It's going to all be based on these page titles, and it's going to be output through this .props.children. Okay, so for instance, our index page is actually going to be our index page here, or I believe my home component. So uh, I'll get to that. Also, I have a footer here. Might as well throw the footer into this layout. Yes, Google will index these pages because they are just straight up HTML. That's the best part about this is that you're not like, it's not Google having to render a React file, you know, like, I mean, it can do that, but it's, 
it's actually just straight up HTML. So this, these uh, HTML files are generated um, via the uh, build tool. And then it also gives you a JavaScript bundle. So initial loads really super fast. All of your pages load super fast. It, it's really nice. Okay. So this is, uh, like I said, it's going to be ugly for the most part because I'm not worrying too much about my um, styles right now because they're in stylus, as I mentioned before. Let's actually go ahead and refactor this footer. For instance, I have uh, a list of links, and really all I need is a name for them and a link. So I could do that in an array of objects, just a collection here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just do it above my class here. We can just have a const and we can have footer links. Actually, I'll just have this be name. And link. Let me get rid of the sidebar here. You can see this a little bit more. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm pulling all of these links into an array of objects. Reason being just to save some, I don't know, I don't have to rewrite all of my classes. You don't have to rewrite all of that code. Just a little bit of keeping it nice and dry here. Let's actually do this. Let's get rid of this. Again, this is one of the coolest shortcuts for VS Code and other things. But if you hold Shift, Option, and then hit the Down key, it will copy and move down a line like that. Super easy. So uh, let's... Scrolling down back and forth kind of stinks. Let's go YouTube. Right now I'm just refactoring the footer a little bit um, because I want to save some space here. I don't want to have to rewrite this list out. And I'll make adding links in the future easier. Bit bucket. Um, I'm going to pull this LinkedIn link because really I'm not a fan of LinkedIn overall. So not going to bother with that one. It's not going to make the cut. Okay, let's close this object off. There we go. So now that we have these footer links, check it out like this, right? Now what we can do is simply just map over them in React or in JavaScript down here. We can write this stuff once. So inside of social, I can do footer links dot map. I can have a link. Okay, now each link is simply just going to be this. Now I actually notice I have this target blank thing. I need that rel no loop back. What's that? Uh, I believe it's rel no loop back. I don't know it offhand. I have to copy and paste it. Oh, rel no follow. I believe that's it. Okay. rel equals no follow. Cool. So if you're not familiar with this, just Google rel equals no follow and uh, target blank. You'll see that there's some vulnerability of using target blank in single page applications without using rel no follow. So uh, until I get this new version of the site, please don't exploit my site. <laughs> okay, check it out. What we need here inside of the href is we want the link. So we can say link dot 
link, referencing link dot link. And for the title, we want it to be link dot name dot name. Okay. And what we should see now, what I'm doing is I'm right here is I'm iterating over that array. I'm outputting uh, essentially just the same thing over and over again. What we should see in our code, because this is just React, is the where to find me list is doubled, right? It's got everything kind of twice. So now I can just go ahead and get rid of this. What this is doing is it's transforming, you know, I don't know, X amount of lines of markup into uh, really just four lines, five lines of markup, but then we have our like data structure up here. So while well, Minami didn't save you any lines overall in code, if I wanted to change any of the markup itself, it now gets super easy. And I want to use the link.name here for the class name. However, I need this like to lowercase. I believe the property is to lowercase, yes. Okay. Let's see if everything's all good here. Open on my dev tools. Should be able to see that this has a class of lowercase Twitter. Okay, it has a class of lowercase Twitter. We should be all good. Okay, so I now have the footer in here. I have the header in here. Things are refactored just a little bit. And now I get to work on the individual pages. So this will show you the strength of Gatsby. Whereas before in the site, I had to write my routing config. I had to write all these routes. I had to import uh, each of my components. And well, uh, you know, all that stuff's great. You can see exactly what's going on. Sometimes it's nice to have things that are just a little bit easier. And like I said, we can compare exactly what's going on here. So let's check out... Um, Let's first bring in the home page. So the home page is going to become my index component. And you can see the home component is really nothing fancy here. It's essentially just a video and like one line of text. So let's head to Gatsby. Yeah, I know there's if there was a YouTube, I don't know if you can do YouTube live bots or something like that. It'd be nice for the theme. Okay, here we are in our index page. What I wanna do is paste that in here just like this. So this is our index page. The only thing is, is it's not going to find this showcase.mp4 because it doesn't exist in this site. So we're gonna get a big old fat, um, you know, cannot find error 404 right here. We do have our text. You can see how fast this is though already as I'm developing. So I'll, I'll come back to this video. Right now I wanna get all my pages in here. Okay, so I'm gonna change page two. Let's open up page two and just rename it to be about, about. Okay, I'm gonna get the about component from my pages directory. Again, these are all really simple components. My indentation is kind of not great right now. When I did this, I was indenting at four lines for some reason. Now. I'm not. Also, my ESLint is currently not running, probably because I need to install all of the ESLint dependencies. Okay, so basically I'm just copying and pasting. So what I have here is the way Gatsby works is that it's looking inside of your pages directory for these pages. And it's going to look at this file about.js and inside of pages, since it's not inside of another folder, when you route to forward slash about, we're gonna get the about content. So like I said, I haven't written any routing. I haven't done anything uh, to indicate that other than naming this file about. Now, if I navigate to this page, you can see my resume is showing up, my bio is showing up. This bio is outdated. It says I work for Team Detroit, uh, which I haven't worked for Team Detroit in like two years. Yeah, no, I, I will install Prettier and ESLint. Um, I have it all set up, but it's, the config's not here and stuff like that. So right now this is just kind of quick and dirty, get this stuff over. And then I kind of need to figure out my, uh, 
what I'm going to do about these styles if I want to do inline styles or wait until stylus is working within Gatsby to move further. So as you can see here, because I don't have a uh, projects page, there's no dot projects dot JSS or JS. It's giving me a 404 and this 404 is automatic. I didn't have to do anything to configure this 404. We simply have a 404.js and you know, uh, Gatsby knows what to do here. So this is really brilliant for us because, you know, who wants to write routing and then all that stuff every single time, like I said. Cool. Okay, so we have about, we have index. I'm going to make a new page, and it's going to be for my projects. Yeah, this indenting is killing me right now. I need to get this... Uh, ES lint set up. This site was made in 2015, if you're wondering. So, um, or it was, it was originally made in 2015. So obviously coding styles and stuff have changed a lot. So what I'm going to do for this page, I'm simply just going to copy this stuff. Um, I have used TypeScript. I'm not going to bother with TypeScript for something like this. I think the page is just projects. Yeah, projects. So like I said, Gatsby is using React Router, but you don't have to write any routes. You don't have to write any route config. It uh, just sort of does everything based on your directory. And once again, this, um, this indenting is terrible, and I apologize for it. But this is just my projects page. It's essentially a link of lists, another one I could abstract out into uh, a collection of data. But as you can see here, man, this thing is so fast. You know, you save it and you tab back and you can't even beat it. See here, this is my projects page. Now, if you want my personal opinion on how to do a portfolio page, I've never been a huge fan unless you're like a visual designer. Unless you're a visual designer, I've never been a huge fan of linking to images and stuff like that. Maybe if it's a website that's no longer online, you could link to that kind of thing. But... If it's a site that's no longer online, do you really need it in your portfolio? For me, it's like this stuff is, is stuff that's somewhat relevant, so it's good to have in here. I would say React is not overkill for this because I like React, and look at how fast this is. Um, we're getting all of the benefits of using React without having to have server i mean this is all compiled into html and then uh, with a small bundle so yeah i guess maybe there's nothing dynamic going on here but it's going to be really easy to add page transitions to add all this like non um you know the pages don't refresh obviously in between we're doing it all with javascript um this is why would any JS, why would you use any JS framework library for a static one page? Well, in this particular instance, you could access to, like I said, all of the nice things about React. You can add dynamic things, page transitions, and stuff like that. You get this really fast routing between pages because each page load isn't an HTTP request, right? We're doing one, we're doing one load, right? The initial load request, and that's statically generated into HTML files. So uh, the reason why you would use it is because if you had several different HTML files and you were just loading those up, it's going to be, um, you're going to be doing HTTP requests through each page. Each page is going to be a slower load time. Each routing is going to be slower. Uh, really, this thing flies, and it flies because it's using a JS framework, not because it's, well, in addition to being static. Okay, so let's go ahead 
and pages, we're going to do a contact. So you could go with Express, right? But why would you use Express when you don't need a server? Like I don't need a, uh, a node server to run this if it compiles just HTML files, right? You know, HTML files can be loaded up anywhere where if you have an Express server, your Express server has to be running all the time for the site to be working. If it's uh, static HTML pages, you could load a static HTML up page anywhere really even on uh, GitHub pages, so you don't have to pay for hosting that way. Okay, last one is the contact page. Again, I've always been a fan of simple contact pages. So like, not having a contact form, because why do you need a contact form? People could just email you. H do I recommend using HTML preprocessors? I like them, but since I started using React, I stopped using them um, only because the majority of the community doesn't. Also, when you're doing tutorials a lot, you uh, you want to make sure you're using stuff that other people are, are using. And so it doesn't really help me in any sort of way right now. But I, there was a time when I really liked using Jade and, and that sort of stuff. All right. I don't think I need React Helmet. Well, I'll want React Helmet on most of these pages, actually, to be honest. I don't need Gatsby Link. Okay, contact. Feel free to contact me. Projects about. And just like this, we have this site. Um, you can see the source. Uh, you can see eh, we have some styles and stuff in here. But this is just the dev site. If we wanted to compile this all out, I believe there's a Gatsby command. It's like, shoot. Uh, I don't know it offhand. I'd have to look on their page. Yeah, but as you can see here, I wrote no routing. I uh, didn't actually change a whole ton. I just copy and pasted a bunch of stuff over. And just like that, I have my entire site up and running. Obviously, it's not fancy just yet. Now, let's talk about something interesting here. Cats BJS. Okay. So I want to bring in this video. So on my scottolinsky.com, I have a video in the background of me dancing. And I want to bring that in, but I want to show you a good way to do it here or I don't maybe not a good way but like something fun here let's see I have ST 2017 ST 15 and so one way we could get this working is simply in the public static folder we can just toss this in or at least I'm under the assumption of like I said this is my first time really using Gatsby so I'm under the assumption of that we can just toss this footage in here. Um, I have a bunch of videos here. I'm trying to figure out which one I used. You could use this one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I use the same one I used before because I like this one a lot. So I'm going to use the same video. I have a WebMHD version. I have an MP4. And let's see. They're in the static folder. As far as I know from looking at this documentation, just by simply being in the static folder, we should be able to access them at just flat slash uh, the 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 uh, URL here. But like I said, this is my first time using this, so we're going to find out. And there's actually a way you can import them, which we're going to be also be doing in a second. I'm going to my index file where I have, or actually I don't want my index, I want my index page 
where you can see I'm loading up showcase.mp4 or showcase2. See if this works at all. Okay, it doesn't look like it's finding these videos. So I'm wondering if they're inside of static like this. We're going to see if this works. I could always just read the docs, but this is more fun. There we go. So that's the whole thing. Um, this, yeah, okay. Um, there's a ton of videos of me doing this online. So um, if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I'm always posting <laughs> I'm always posting videos like this. So, okay, here we are. Videos up. Videos working. So, looks like it needs the static. Now, I want to try something interesting here. I am going to load up this video. It says here you can import right into a uh, JavaScript package or right into a JavaScript file using the standard import. So the way they do it is import logo from logo.ping, right? So you can import a logo and then use its source right here. And it says you can do this with MP4s and WebMs and stuff like that. So that's gonna be exciting for me to try. So let's figure this out. It looks like it wants it to be in the same directory here as the file. So let's break this by pulling this out of static now and into source pages and just drop these in here. Like I said, I haven't done this before. So we're going to see if this works. When you import it, I'm wondering if it needs the same title, like import logo from logo.ping, like does it need to be logo or could you import it as anything? These are questions that I'll find out right now. Okay, so we're gonna import, we'll do, we'll, we'll leave this as, we'll have this be import vid. I'm gonna see if this works. Okay, experiment, learning through experimentation. Show case.2.mp4. Okay, now let's go ahead and do what they say and just console log this variable to see if this can work. Okay, yeah, uh, looks like the index is logging this out maybe. It seems like it should be. So now I'm going to change the source from uh, this to this. I'm also going to just comment out the WebM version because why not? And it's back. Cool, this will be on my channel. This will be totally saved here as uh, uh, Jonas, Jonas or Jonas, I, I hope, Tell me uh, if I'm spelling your name or saying your name wrong. I'm terrible with stuff like that. Jonas uh, says that you could name it anything, and he is absolutely correct. So we can say, um, we could name this Billboard eh, MP4. I'm going to do the same thing, but with WebM. Now, why would you do this import syntax for this? Um, it talks a little bit about it in the docs. After I get done typing here, I'll show you. I actually have no idea how much this part of it works for video, but we'll see. Uh, I am moving from Meteor because the site does not need a database. I used to have a database and I used to have some admin tools built into it. Uh, since then I have totally abandoned all that stuff, deleted it. And now the site is like, does not need a database whatsoever. So it's going to be a lot faster. 
It already is. It's already a lot faster. And I'm also, reason why there's no styles here is because my styles are in stylus. Gatsby is currently not supporting stylus at this very second, although there is a pull request in for it, so it should be very, very soon. Um, and uh, I can't decide if I want to do inline styles for this yet. I know the inside, inline styles... Uh, the inline styles debate is like raging pretty hard right now. So uh, this kind of projects are great ones to see how much you like doing inline styles on. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see here. So yeah, okay. Check it out. Um, to read through this, to reduce the number of requests to the server, importing images that are less than 10,000 bytes uh, returns a data URI instead of a path. So um, I'm not confident because when I count this, it returned a path. So uh, we, we will see if there's any benefit at all to me importing this because they're not images and they're large videos. Like I said, I probably need to read a little bit more about that. Okay. Yeah, so this is really it, right? I mean, there's nothing to this. The ways you could obviously change that are instead of importing React component, React, we could change this like this. There's a little code style things you can do. Um, connection dropped, test. Test, test. Let's see. I'm like turning off any device I have that's on the Wi-Fi right now. Maybe that's doing it. I'm working on getting fiber internet over here at the house, so... Hopefully that is a thing very soon. I'm currently struggling on some Comcast that's way too expensive for what it is. You know, classic, classic. Okay, cool. So check it out. Nothing really crazy here, but everything's up and running. I've refactored a few of my components. Everything is working. Like I said, the styles aren't in here because uh, I got to redo all of the styles for this entire thing. I am getting a... Not an error, but a warning about not having a key on this map. Key equals link dot. Uh, we'll do link dot name. Those are all unique. Right, so as Jonas is saying, if you import it, um, it's now basically under the control of Webpack and Gatsby rather than just sort of like uh, just being a standard request. Okay. But yeah, th that's pretty much it here. Um, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, I guess the next step for me is to spend a lot of time going through and taking my stylus and all that code I have there and either using inline styles or um, waiting till stylus is working and getting this up and running. Because the last thing I want to do is, well, I don't want to rewrite this in, in, in SAS right now just because I'd rather do something a little bit different if I'm going to. But yeah, that's it. Uh, here we have a new fast site. We have all sorts of cool stuff. And I'm going to get working on getting this inline styles or the styles up so that I can have my site back to where it was. Um, this is Gatsby JS. This is my first real time spending any time with it. I'm not doing anything complex, but head to their site. There's a ton of cool complex stuff you can do. There's good examples. I'm excited for when the rest of this tutorial is done because I want to learn a little bit more how, about how this... Um, bringing in data works here and uh yeah that's pretty much it cool so thank you for watching this live stream like i mentioned before syntax.fm for west boss and i's new podcast or you can uh check out level up tutorials oh 
Uh, Jonas is suggesting I build a static version. So that's actually a good idea uh, because this is the version of the site that you can take with you. You can see under the getting started, um, we have different commands for the CLI, like there's Gatsby build, which will perform an optimized production build of your site, generating static HTML per route JavaScript code bundles, which is what I like to hear. And there's also Gatsby serve, which starts a local HTML server for testing your built site. So obviously the one we want here is going to be Gatsby build. Uh, and Dean, by the way, who says uh, he would love to see a live stream of the styles, I would love to do that, except for I don't sort of know what I'm doing with it yet. And that won't make for super compelling live stream as I try to figure out if I want to rewrite things or not. But um, we'll see if I get halfway through it and things are going well, I can do that. Okay, so I'm going to run Gatsby build. I'm thinking you should be able to run Gatsby build at the same time as you're running Or what does this do exactly? Again, I could probably read the docs, but. So I ran Gatsby. I ran. Oh, it's compiling it right now. Okay. <laughs> I was like, where, where is it building to? Okay. Um, why did I leave Meteor JS? Uh, I haven't left Meteor for most things. I have several projects running on Meteor. This site just like is the last thing in the world that needs Meteor JS. Uh, at one point it had a database and I had some stuff in here and I've abandoned it. I want to be going straight up static because I'm not bringing in data from a database. I'm not doing anything real time. Um, so nothing against Meteor. There was just really 0% reason for me to use it on this. Okay, so it looks like our uh, production bundle is finished. It took 52 seconds. It won't take you that long. My CPU is struggling with this live stream. And you can see here my public folder looks very different. Uh, my public folder is very, very different. So let's check this out. And whoever says RTC for life, uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, so check it out. We have a bunch of different JavaScript bundles, which is great because we have source maps too. Um, so you can see here, we have our layout component. Um, all of the stuff is nothing you're ever going to touch because these are obviously the uh, minified and compressed versions of everything. And we have my index.html right here. What you can see is built as like a standard HTML page, right? index.html. We have all our good stuff. It's loading up a bunch of our JavaScript bundles here. So uh, we get our correct bundle, but you can see it's completely rendered out all of that code into straight up HTML. That's going to load very, very fast. Um, so whoever says Meteor or Node, Meteor is Node. Um, so I guess you would say both. And then we have just basically a styles.css, which I'm not using because I don't have any styles in here yet. But so it looks like that's what the build command does. It generates this public folder. And this public folder, you can see, has all of our pages completely rendered out into HTML pages. And this this static or this public folder here that, wait, public stat, yeah. This public folder over here that we're getting out of everything is the one that you would just throw up on a web server. You could just open this up anywhere. You could open this file in a browser, whatever. And it's gonna it's gonna be sweet. Now for deployment, I'm I have a a DigitalOcean server that I have a bunch of Node stuff running on. Um, and this would just be fine. You just throw it up there. I have an Nginx on there, point to this index file and should be a okay. The cool part about this is we don't need a, like a, a node server or anything to run this, right? So it instantly becomes easier to uh, host anywhere you want. You could host this on like GoDaddy if you wanted to. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could host this on GoDaddy. But yeah, so okay. 
So this is Gatsby. As you can see here, I built a public version. Does anybody have any last questions here before I sign off? Yeah, they do talk. They do talk about surge in the docs for Gatsby, um, which seems pretty cool. If you already have it in a server, though, it's not super necessary, but it seems like a cool place to host, nice and easy. Howdy to Adam, who I met at Dinosaur JS, super nice guy. You should check out Adam's YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, okay, if there's no more questions, I'm going to sign off here. We got this up and running. Like I said, I'm going to dig around in the styles here and actually start to finish this build out. And I'll let everybody know when the site's up online so that you can check it out. Um, paw through it, see how fast it is. You can host these on GitHub pages. That's actually one of the benefits that Gatsby lists on their homepage. If you scroll down, it's like, here's where you can deploy this. GitHub pages, search, uh, a static host, S3, self-hosted, any of this stuff. So part of the thing, part of the great part about, um, about this, this platform and static websites in general, you get to use all your cool React tools. You can make it as dynamic as you want, but you still get all the benefits of straight up HTML. So that gets a big, like you can't see my thumb for some reason. I don't know why. It gets a big thumbs up from me. Okay, cool. So that's it. No biggie. Uh, hit me up on Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. Look for me at leveluptutorials.com. You can go to leveluptutorials.com slash store to purchase anything from the site. Got a lot of tutorial series up there. I just put up a React Native for Everyone series, which is not intended to be like the end-all be-all of React Native, but it's for people who have limited React and React Native understanding so that you can get up and start running uh, real native applications that compile to literal native applications um, using just React. And you don't have to know React to do this course. I teach React while I'm teaching you React Native. So React Native for everyone. And somebody says, can you host your Meteor app in Heroku? I host a couple of Meteor apps in Heroku using Meteor Build Pack Ho or Horse. Meteor Build Pack Horse. Check that out if you want to be hosting on Heroku. It's a nice experience. Um, I just moved up level of tutorials to uh, Meteor's Galaxy platform um, because of the you know the page rendering sort of stuff and overall just platform stability. I was running on a DigitalOcean droplet, um, a MUP or Meteor Deploy got a little too awful for me, so I bailed. Um, Adam says a good sequel to Wes Boss's React courses. It's it's a little bit more basic than Wes's React course um, because it's React Native. Um, React Native is a huge, uh, huge beast, so to say. I, I My original React Native series was like 10 hours long, and the moment something became invalidated, it ruined the entire series. So what I'm doing now is I have a very basics one, and then I'm going to move on to intermediate and advanced stuff because there's so much there in React Native. Uh, I am a freelance developer. Uh, I pretty much do level up tuts full time. I've been working in agencies my entire career up until now. And uh, yeah, just doing level up tuts and doing freelance. Yeah, so hit me up. Uh, check out my website. Check out level up tutorials. Hit me up on Twitter or anything like that. Thanks so much for watching. And this is the end of this live stream.